Thank you so much, Ruben, for joining us. Today, we have uh, Ruben with us, and I am so happy to have him with us on this Democracy Samvad. Before, we have had MPs, MLAs, uh, councillors, but I think today is a special day for me to have a young person with me over here who has been in the political uh, game for a while now. Uh, before uh, taking questions and going into Ruben's life journey, I'll ask, I'll briefly share about him. So Ruben is National Joint Secretary of Aam Aadmi Party. He lives in Mumbai and works from there. Apart from being active in Aam Aadmi Party, he has been a Corona warrior and uh, he started his initiative Khana Chahiye and through which he has fed more than uh, 20,000. I think I'll ask him to give the exact number, but what I read was more than 20,000 people. 47 yes, lakh. 20,000 20, families, sorry. 27 lakh 47 people. Lakh, 47 lakh meals. 47 lakh meals and he's raised more than 13 crore rupees to channelize resources for the people in Mumbai. So uh, thank you, Robin, for joining on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, extremely sorry for all the people who registered for the last week. He was not well, food poisoning, and that's why we had to cancel yeah, it. My, but my, today, yeah, my profound apologies for that. And today we'll ask more questions from him, listen to his life journey. First thing first, Robin, why politics? You had a good career, you're still in uh, working. So why politics? No, I think if uh, one really wants to create a lasting impact uh, in the most efficient possible way and affect the most number of people, you have to work uh, with the organization of organizations, which is the government. And uh, I think... Uh, when I started off, I was uh, very active in my church, parish, youth group. We would do some social work here and there. My mother was a very charitable disposition and we would, you know, go and feed the poor and do all those kinds of things in the past. And uh, I would ask myself the question that, you know, all of this is essentially piecemeal. And uh, that's when, uh, you know, I, uh, for the first time, interacted with Dr. Jay Prakash Narayan of uh, Lok Sattah. And then started looking at, you know, all these things as uh, corruption, poverty, etc. as just symptoms of a larger, uh, larger disease of systemic failure. And uh, if you had to really address that, it had to be politics. And uh, I still remember there was, uh, and I'd like to give you a specific example uh, as to why politics and not social work. Um, my theory of change basically revolves around multiple things which need to be done, not just one thing. Uh, politics is one of the most important things. It's not the only thing, uh, but is it is one of the most important things. And um, I'd like to recall this incident uh, during, uh, in, in 2007. I remember we had uh, our independent corporator, Mr. Adolf D'Souza, who was elected from our ward, Ward 63 in Juhu. Uh, I was a teenager then. I was just about 18. And uh, he was an independent corporator. And uh, we had Shailesh Gandhi, who is, of course, uh, the former... Uh, Chief Information, Central Information Commissioner. Uh, and uh, he was an RTI activist back then and he had filed an RTI and found out that uh, there is uh, the Crawford Market. Uh, so Crawford Market, just for all of you people who are not from Mumbai, Crawford Market is this large uh, market, a very historic market uh, in the heart of uh, the city. It's a very large uh, heritage space. And when it came to its redevelopment, we found uh, uh, through RTI that uh, uh, its valuation was much more than what the contract was being awarded. And he said that, look, this is um, this is daylight robbery. This is a loss to the public exchequer. You need to stop it. And I remember I, along with a team of about 8, 10 people, uh, I was in engineering uh, back then. And I remember uh, literally going and meeting all these corporators, meeting all these uh, elected representatives. And we met everybody. And there was this theory that there is the good Congress and there is the bad Congress. There's a good BJP and there's a bad BJP. The, the, good, the good Congress is made up of good people. The bad Congress is made up of the villains. And, you know, it's constantly a fight between them or whatever it is. But to my experience, when I went and met the so-called stalwarts, all of them said, okay, yeah, what you're saying makes sense. Uh, but we can't be committal. We'll try and do something. Uh, we're not sure what. And on the day of... Uh, the proposal actually being discussed um, in, uh, in the house. I remember standing in the viewer's gallery and that day, that day I made up my mind that it has to be politics. Because when the issue came up 
and there were two twenty seven corporators, and there were all the, there were the good Congress people, there were bad Congress people, there were good BJP people, there were bad BJP people. But the only person who stood up there to oppose that, saying that this is wrong, was Adolf D'Souza, that independent corporator from my ward, which we helped elect, and that was it. Because if if we are just going to beat around the bush and uh, try and somehow uh, expect. Some moral impulse to take over people, and people suddenly start start doing start do, start doing good. That's not going to happen. So I was convinced it had to be politics, and it had to be alternative politics on that day itself. And that was I was what eighteen or nineteen. So so that I hope uh, that answers your question. Yeah, for sure. And how has this journey been? Like you're sharing about this. How's the journey like from eighteen nineteen when you joined, and you've also seen the entire journey of Amadni Party very closely. So how has the journey been for you, and then I'll come. How has the journey been for the party? No, I think I think it's it, it's been a fantastic journey because uh, when uh, when I started out, I mean, I was always as a young boy very much interested in politics, and what really piqued my interest was the local in my local area where I lived. There was a Shiv Sena unit, and very interestingly. Uh, when i was still growing up i remember uh, an ex banker contesting as an independent corporator and losing the election so here i couldn't understand as to how is it that uh, you know somebody with uh, resources somebody with all the educated people in the world uh, who lived in my area so i live in juhu uh, that part of town which is like a hub of activism and so on and so forth how did they lose and how is it that a bunch of people who obviously were not as well qualified as uh, the ex banker and uh, activist janta how did they win the election and that's when i started getting myself involved and i saw first hand um, how electioneering is uh, is basically done and uh, how during an election when you walk into a slum it basically looks like a war ravaged zone because you can't see any able bodied young man or woman and they're all involved in the election machine and uh, how uh, people may really Like who you are, but they may not vote for you uh, because uh, the vote at that point in time is not just a function on how good you are as a candidate or how convincing your agenda is. Um, so all of these things were very early learnings, and uh, I think the breakthrough happened uh, in two thousand and seven when um, you know a bunch of people uh, uh, put together the Vote Mumbai campaign, which spoke about. uh the 74th amendment uh, which is a community participation law greater grassroots democracy uh, through the through what is now known as the nagar raj bill and that was being implemented in juhu and i really i remember meeting uh an adolf back then uh and uh, uh you know an adolf told told us that hey you know we are going to win this election in just 75000 rupees and uh, we're going to be a bunch of honest people and uh, well this is how we're going to function and uh, you can basically be like a mini corporator of your area by actually taking an area sabha which is like uh, an urban version of a panchayat a mohalla sabha essentially and it's going to be fun and we won that election uh, even i i mean despite all odds i think that's 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 where it started off uh, adolf ended up uh, becoming uh, the prabhak samiti chairman of k west ward so mumbai has 24 administrative wards k west ward has about Uh, 14 lakh odd uh, odd voters, and um, you know we we actually had a chance to impact urban governance. Actually, work very closely when it when it came to program implementation, when it came to uh, getting the budgets organized at the city level. So so that's how for so five years um, as a, a, as a corporator. And of course, subsequent to that, there was a, a change in the constituency and. uh we we required a candidate with a particular caste because of the reservation and uh we didn't we, we weren't able to do that and we lost that election uh very just by 500 votes but it it taught us a lot and subsequent to that the first party that i was engaged with was was lok satta uh which uh, which i think uh, really really helped me understand the problem of uh, politics and and how it should basically be solved but i think lok satta had its limitations and uh, uh jp It's a great mentor, as I always say. Uh, the mantra that I that I use uh, is uh, that I may not believe in a god, but I certainly believe in a sin, and that sin which is unacceptable is avoidable suffering and unutilized potential. That's a very powerful paradigm: avoidable suffering and unutilized potential. All of what you can see: poverty, corruption, uh, inefficiency. Uh, all of this doesn't need to be there. 
and all of this can happen to politics. So that's that's how it started. Um, uh, I met Arvind uh, for the first time in 2009 when we were trying to experiment something what we did in Juhu at uh, at an Andheri level. And what really touched me even back then, I, I still remember, was this was this guy who was who was straight. Uh, you know, he would he he would just. Uh, have a focus like that of Arjun. He could just see the eye of the fish, and he would say that the problem is politics. All of this is uh, okay. You can do do some activity and feel happy about it, but the problem is politics. Even back then, in 2009, when we first in Juhu, when when he had actually come down there, and I've been following his journey ever since. I was um, very uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have been one of the first people who. Uh, you know, started India against corruption in the city. We had something called the Dandi March too. We got so many young people together, and thereafter you had uh, India against corruption, and we were the Bombay center, the whole uh, whole action across the country. And then there was a party, and I joined the party, and and I think I've been uh, I've been finally finally lucky to be associated uh, with a movement which ha- actually has an elected government. So prior to this, when you had uh, various other uh, organizations contest elections uh, they were essentially a flash in the pan they were good good things they were very inspiring stories but they were still a flash in the pan you had to go to people and say that hey you know i am ubin and hey i come from this party and this is my symbol right now all that is sorted we know that hey i am from the aam aadmi party arvind kejriwal is my leader uh, broom happens to be our symbol and uh, we stand for good politics and we we've really worked in delhi to transform things and we intend to do the same thing here so that communication that has been a quantum leap what i would have otherwise thought would uh, basically take decades has actually happened in in just under 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 8 years uh, so that's that, that's that's typically uh, with my story in the party i happen to be uh, in charge of the media here in maharashtra i have to be a uh, national joint secretary the party has been uh, kind enough to Repose trusted me time and again, and uh, I think it's it's fascinating to be uh, a young uh, politician. Yeah. Though of course people uh, look at look at you with suspicion, but uh, but yeah, I think it's up to us to redefine that. Maybe I'll dwell on that in the we'll, question. Yeah, we'll talk more about the suspicion uh, part of it as well. So you took name of two leaders. One I think JP and another one Arvind Kejriwal, and I think uh, a lot of young people of our generation. uh who have been interested in politics who are a little educated want to do something in politics i think jp has been one person that people have read met i have also met him several times in my team also so this one person we have all looked up to but you said lok satta has its own limitation uh so maybe i would want to listen more about what what do you see as the limitation over there and why that could not scale when the leader is a role model for so many young people then what is it that the block is No, no. So I think JP as a leader is phenomenal. You yeah. just listen to him. His I clarity agree. of thought, his clarity of purpose, his choice of words—it's brilliant. I mean, you can't fault JP for anything. Yeah. But I think the limitation lies that uh, uh, when it comes to actually going on the streets and actually, actually standing up with your party men to actually, uh, no, not everything is 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 a. Uh, uh is a is a function of efficiency that hey if we could discuss this at the dinner table and if we could make some great points to uh the is officer concerned that uh, all of it is going to fall in place so i think the the difference between a jp and an arvind and i i really at one point of time hoped that all of these things come together that jp is the mind and and arvind is the guy who is really on the ground really putting those things together you know uh, galvanizing is true i i actually tried to do that that didn't work for whatever reasons and uh, i think uh, that bus uh, that bus is gone but uh, but jp is very much involved uh, even with the party right now giving uh, giving us the, the input from time to time i know i know that for a fact especially when it comes to education when it comes to certain key uh, key areas that his expertise on but coming back to the difference between a jp and an arvind and arvind is somebody hands on and arvind is is going on the ground and saying hey you know we're trying to build an organization how do you how do you build an organization there are going to be challenges we don't have any ready made answers there is no template for us to follow there is no ready playbook what when we when we set out in delhi but that's that's arvind that's him hands on that's him realizing that okay if i have to if i have to climb on a pole 
and cut and 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 and, and join uh, an electricity connection to make a point of symbolism that hey what is actually happening in the name of um, electricity charges are loot i will go ahead and do that i can't imagine a jp climbing on top yeah. of uh, something and cutting cutting a wire he will he will uh, or joining a wire he never do that but an arvin did that and and not that arvin is incapable of making a cogent argument uh, on on television uh, he is amazing too but an arvin walks that extra mile and arvin is that personification of that leader who's going to stand by me of that leader who says hey i'm with you i know it's difficult i know it's complicated but let's we are in this together let's 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 go and conquer together so i think that um, is that is that difference and i and you see you see that right you see an arvin who first formed the party you see you see us for the first time in 2013 when we contested elections in december you see uh we may not be ready as a party but people are ready we there in 28 seats i was there i was there when votes were being counted in in delhi and it was phenomenal jab was aaj tak to uh, a times now to everybody else uh, basically saying ki nahi party hai i had my friends in the bjp who were you know from the so called typical rss families who said ki nahi tumse nahi ho payega kuch hoga kuch nahi hoga but here we had 28 seats and as i let's not forget and arvind actually went down polling booth by polling booth and built that organization let's not forget that that man really did yeah. and i think all of us at some point in time need to stay focused he gets that focus he is extremely sharp he will not comment on things that would somehow um, somehow take the discussion away from issues that actually matter he will speak on 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 governance he will speak on good governance he will speak on what he's delivered he speak on health he'll speak on education he'll speak on water he speak on electricity and that's the leader that you that you really need at a time at a time when all other political parties are are faltering at a time when uh, people are just stuck with uh, whatever playbook that has given them success for a person to get out of that comfort zone change to actually go back to the voters listen to what they're saying and actually involve uh, and actually get back and make changes to the to the way one operates that's that's being nimble that's exactly how a political startup should be and all said and done after 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 the bjp and of course from would i would i would also argue that the congress also is not taking the same breath but at least the aam aadmi party is being considered so as a political party as a startup we we certainly there we we are certainly a very visible brand there is a, a lot of credibility associated with us we may be a small party right now yeah, but uh, uh, but that, that's that's arvin for you that's yeah. that's arvin for, you. for sure i think i will also add a, a bit to it i think uh, when to when the india against corruption movement was happening i think 2000 10 11 i was in mumbai and uh, the nariman point that uh, rally i was also part of it i think many young people saw that as a very hopeful moment and uh, the nam aadmi party happened as i got a lot of those young people joined that also uh, but there is also a disillusionment that happened because of aam aadmi party at certain level because of what maybe arvin was speaking sometimes which was uh, a lot of attack that was happening and there was a marked shift in his strategy after the 2017 april municipal council election that aam aadmi party lost in delhi and after that and before that i could see arvind version 1 and version 2 uh, can you share more about it is it from outside that we see because i have not never been in the party so how do you see that difference and why did he make that choice to attack less and then focus on the work more than attacking people no 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 i i think i think i think uh, in any startup uh, when uh, you are the product you personify the product so there is the party and there is of course a uh, brand arvind kejriwal and uh, in india uh, uh, the leader is in, inseparable with the brand you we've seen that happen with the bjp we've seen that happen with the congress we we, yeah. we it's, it's it's also happened with the aam aadmi party and and that's just a fact of life you may or may not like it but having said that uh, to actually listen to what people are actually saying to actually go on the ground uh, listen to uh listen to what people want and what people and you may want to say whatever you want okay but to actually take that feedback and then make changes in strategy and then go about uh going uh going about your work is i think i think simply phenomenal and uh and i i will done that i think as a party uh, we've made a lot of blunders when it comes to communication when it comes to strategy in the past we've 
we've learned that and uh, what we've realized is uh, you have other parties uh, who actually have uh, so much of resources and obviously we are a small party with very limited resources uh, already running a state which uh, is essentially a half state we don't even have control over the police and the vigilance anti corruption for so forth land and etc and despite that if we really uh, need to need to prevail uh, we have to it has to be a very thought out strategy yeah. uh, and more important uh, more important than that we have to stick on governance we should not allow the narrative to be hijacked for whatever reason away from the uh, because we as a party can deliver on governance uh, when it comes to rhetoric when it comes to basically making loose statements which are emotionally charged and etc that, that's not our forte and that's not our pitch our pitch is governance our pitch is health our pitch is education our pitch is power our pitch is water our pitch is all that we've delivered in these 5 years and we have to stick to that pitch and if you see whenever we've stuck to that pitch we've actually emerged emerged victorious electorally and i think uh, one can't uh, one can't fault an arvind to actually study yeah. what's actually going on and then take the right decision so i don't see why this disillusionment here is an arvind who is basically a politician he is a smart politician he's an educated politician but he is smart enough to not be drawn into any conversation which would somehow hijack uh, the agenda uh, which is which is good governance and he yeah. he stays on that he stays on yeah. on on point he stays on focus and he's won elections why would anyone be disillusioned with a politician who stayed on stayed on focus uh, stayed on point and uh, and won elections i think i think we need to learn from arvind we need to uh we need to learn how to conduct ourselves in public life uh and there, there's a reason for all, there's something to learn for all politicians all aspiring politicians i think that's a good shift also that's why i think there was a marked shift and i think that's a good shift for the party uh i have been like meeting a lot of young political workers from across party lines and one thing which i hear from aam aadmi party political workers is that uh when their leader say something there's more scrutiny among their friends among their group and then your leader said this while uh, from the other parties like from bjp congress or maybe shiv sena leaders would say much more blunder statement but the, the the party workers won't be questioned so one thing one reason i see is because the benchmark was put so high but how do you take it uh, how do you take it like same thing if arvind will say there'll be more questions with ruben but not with someone of the other party supporter no it's good because i think if as a spokesperson of the party in maharashtra if uh people actually hold me up to a higher benchmark and people actually think that hey you know aap to apne ho uh aur aap se to hum ye sawal pooch sakte hain i think it's great finally they've been they have access to a politician uh, in me or in my uh, or a set of politicians in my party that they can relate to that it's like it's like family right when you you, you ask questions of your immediate family members because you care about them because you relate to them and it's good to see that a segment of my friends who are uh, either entrepreneurs or successful corporate professionals in their in the prime of their careers who actually take take time off uh, a friends dinner and and then say hey you know par arvin ne wo bola aur ye kiya aur ye acha tha aur ye bura tha aur uh, and it's okay and i you know when it comes to opinions i have always believed in what shashi tharoor has to say that the mere expression of an opinion doesn't imply the existence of one in most cases this is nothing but random second hand opinions but the good part is that at least they are at least they are voicing that out to you at least they are holding you accountable they feel associated with it it's perfectly fine i respond to them and it can get a little um uh, it a little challenging because uh, some of these questions are actually you know half truths which are peddled around whatsapp and they merely thrown at you but the good part is that people are engaging and as long as people are engaging that's a good thing i think uh, it's a privilege yeah to uh, to be uh, to 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 be the to be arvind kejriwal's man or uh, aam aadmi party's points person in in your group where you are a thought leader and an opinion leader and people people come up to you i think that's the beginning of leadership and people expect you to answer questions now coming back to you i thought i would beat aam aadmi party in the second half but i think we started that over here which went well uh, so how does ruben sees uh, change in the world what is your ideal 
constituency that you want to build when you contest selection so any light on that what is your vision for your people that you want to work with so so the <clears throat> vision is 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 very clear uh when it comes to taking governance to an acceptable level one doesn't really need any ideology uh one just say arvind hamesha kehte hain saaf niyat ki zarurat hai we one needs uh courage of permission and strength of character and uh i will i hope to uh, contest uh, all other things uh, all other things equal i hope to contest uh, the upcoming bmc elections in mumbai uh start at the very grassroots actually get elected uh, a corporator can do a lot uh, while there are a lot of limitations in the way the bmc functions in terms of the executive answerable directly to the state government and the councillors being able to make laws that they themselves don't implement all of these things exist but uh, i have worked with a corporator in the past i know um, in slum simple things simple simple amenities which actually one there the simple act of uh, covering uh, the drainage there resulted into almost an 80% drop in reported malaria cases right in the slum and this is something that we we actually have a case study on uh, or just do whatever we did in delhi of course we have a government there but the focus would be on ensuring that the poorest of the poor actually have uh, a dignified life and it is to that extent that whatever i can do i will certainly do uh, i hope to reach out to them i hope to win elections without money muscle power or a divisive agenda when all of that is ample in the space there um and yeah uh, the focus would be on on young people i think um, india broadly is a very young constituency it's a constituency which doesn't have baggage uh, i sometimes and that's why it's very smart of arvind because he is appealing to that constituency he is appealing to those young people who don't really care what what's what happened uh, 20 years ago and why for some reason should people basically be at cross purposes with each other at some occurrence in 20 years ago when they weren't even weren't even around or 30 years ago or 40 years ago for that matter so it's it's uh, so the constituency that i cater to uh, are young people like me uh, who don't have any baggage who uh, really uh, don't see any reason as to why can't there be a good politician uh for whom life is beyond stereotypes life is about actually doing things we we all we all uh have a very short life span there is very little time for all of this tamasha uh we need to work we need to get going and we need to do what it takes to improve the lives of the people uh who are our constituency so it's it's very clear i think uh, when it comes to uh my clarity of thought and purpose that's the constituency it's essentially essentially young people hopefully this will come true soon so when you said that uh, working for the people who are needy i think so for attendance school of democracy our vision is how do we have leaders who will work for sarvodaya like upliftment of the last person um, absolutely uh, that's what gandhi. i think our focus is how can we have more ruben Ga- gandhi ji Ga- gandhi ji sarvodaya not uh, the latest version of sarvodaya which is being peddled around just for the record yes sarvodaya the meaning of sarvodaya is upliftment of, of all no matter if one uses or anyone uses i think the meaning will not change so the true meaning of that word that's what i think our uh, vision is at indian school of democracy yeah you're saying something absolutely i think um, the, there is another point about sarvodaya is is that sarvodaya comes from ahimsa and ahimsa comes from comes from love ahimsa comes from infinite love which is gandhi ji's version of things there may be some other version of sarvodaya but if it doesn't come through love it doesn't come to empathy it doesn't come to compassion it won't work so yeah. that's the small limited point that i was trying to make that i agree now you have a set of uh, yeah. new non gandhi so called ideologues that whom sarvodaya is being uh, ascribed to i just thought i'll i'll, I'll make the distinction uh, sarvodaya uh, has to come from ahimsa and uh, love it, it can't i can't hear you for some reason. yeah can you audible hello? yeah am i audible now um yeah now i think yeah yeah i think sarvodaya does come from ahimsa and love and they can't be sarvodaya without deep rooted ahimsa and love in that Thank you. so that is gandhi ji that is gandhi ji sarvodaya oh so, yeah we both <laughs> are on the same page and we aspire to be 21st century sabarmati ashram that's what we say a space which is thriving in terms of multiple political ideologies dialogue 
which doesn't exclude anyone. It's an inclusive space. So that's what I think the vision is. And that's what our programs are oriented towards. And that's why I wanted today you to uh, listen to your uh, thoughts around politics and other things. Uh, when you spoke about local governance, what we see as also, and if I go back to like 12, 13 years back, 14 years back, when I first thought about uh, being in politics, when I was doing my engineering, the first thought at least in me came as to become an MP. And I think often uh, I'm come from Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. Often when we think of politics, we start at MLA or MP level. Eventually, we realize that they are lawmakers. A lot of basic, what you said, bijli, pani, sadak, uh, drainage, ye sara councillor ya some pan panchayat ke hath mein hota hai. So how do you how do you bring that focus back? That young people should start at the unit of democracy, which is a municipal council or a sarpanch level. So how does it get done? No, no. I I I am I am very clear. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I really want to work on the ground. Uh, and i really want to make changes to people's lives 60% of all the things that actually matter whether it comes to the roads that we walk on when it comes to the footpaths when it comes to water when it comes to sanitation when it comes to education when it comes to healthcare uh, when it comes to garbage when it comes to waste segregation all of this is essentially the bmc and if you really want to really impact people's lives it has to start uh from uh from the municipal corporation from your panchayat level uh, and also uh also for a for a person like me i've seen a lot of people who get uh, helicopter in different parties uh, the use of the term helicopter uh, is very interesting because it both happens during an election and actually see the helicopter plus people actually get helicoptered and people get elected and then they are mlas and then they are uh, mps but what do these people do with due respect and 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 sorry i'm not going to take names here but i've seen a, a young south mumbai mp who got elected when he was 26 and he's a friend and uh, we interact very often but i remember writing to him very angrily on twitter uh, in 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 the day and age that hey you shouldn't be going about cutting ribbons uh, at the shorta line you should actually be raising issues of your constituents ensuring that central schemes are actually being implemented uh, say the right things go around get accountability so i think most people are clueless when they get elected what what to do the average mla doesn't even forget even going out there and getting a good attendance he is not even able to intervene uh, logically when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the uh, his legislative interventions it's 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 pathetic so what is the use of getting so one is let's look at the happy part let's say you get elected to an mla and an, and an mp and it looks good but what do you do you don't do much and if you all that you want to do is just go and cut ribbons uh, here and there and not really have your world view of change and not really use your legislative privilege which is to actually ask questions and hold the government accountable then then what the hell so that's that's number one so i think even in that position which is basically privilege the problem in getting an mla seat and actually getting elected from these mainstream parties of course and this is again something that prakar you should speak more about is the entry barrier is, is very high so you either need to be uh, somebody from a particular family or you need to basically have access to a lot of money uh, to get elected uh, because that's that's typically what happens right in the other parties when it comes to uh, getting a ticket to actually spending money on getting elected and then once you get elected and obviously we know that that is an investment uh, so called it is that's how the other parties look at it uh, but if you really want to contest elections on an ethical platform and win see in in the local local body elections in mumbai you just need about 5000 votes to win it's not that difficult 5000 votes 5000 is the number of uh, friends that i have had on facebook 5000 is roughly the number of people that we have through our groups uh, you know i play football i am i'm, 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 I'm I'm part of my college alumni. I went to the same school in the area. I went to the gym, Khana, etc. So all of these come together. Five thousand is a very doable number. It's not complicated at all. So should one really want to start? One should start small. Um, one should start small because it gives you a lot of experience, and uh, more than that, it gives you uh, it gives you a good head start. It gives you a great grounding as to what people want and what do they. expect out of an elected leader and it's only after that that you you'll rise when it comes to politics so i don't have any any shame at all 
uh, or I don't have any qualms at all to to say that I want to start small. I want to start with the municipal corporation. I want to make change in the grassroots in in one ward in Mumbai. Uh, and what is true for Mumbai is also true for urban India. And at some point in time, slowly graduate and uh, maybe hopefully uh, hope to become an MLA and maybe hope to become the chief minister. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing. All the best for that uh, journey, MLA to Chief Minister. Uh, a very interesting thing that I think you, uh, in the last nine months, you have been completely occupied at the pandemic relief work. And then you also got COVID positive. Uh, can you briefly share about how this idea is sparked and where it started and how it went around? And then we would come to the uh, financial sustainability part of a young politician. And I remember the conversation we had the other day. That's an interesting thing for today. Yeah. So, so Khana Chahiye uh, is different from politics, has nothing to do uh, with uh, politics per se. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when the lockdown started out, we were receiving a lot of information from a lot of uh, corners as regards uh, people going hungry and uh, the lockdown uh, had, and the pandemic had essentially amplified inequality, wages were paused, uh, people couldn't basically earn their own livelihood. And uh, given Given the problem at hand, this is obviously a very uh, resilient city. I have always believed that uh, Mumbaikers have a lot of heart and what one actually needs is uh, someone who can give leadership to that effort. And I uh, reached out to for Shishir uh, Joshi of Project Mumbai. I reached out to uh, my friends. There is uh, Swaraj, there is Anik, there is Patrick of Litmus Test Project, there is uh, Rakesh Ji of Bharat Uttan Sang, there is Neeti who's a restaurant. And we as a diverse bunch of individuals came together and said, okay, let's try and solve this problem. Uh, uh, at once, at one side, we essentially quantified the problem on the demand side. And on the supply side, we created a network of unused kitchen capacities through restaurants, which were essentially shut during the lockdown. And we married demand and supply. Uh, this was basis the kind of resources we were able to mobilize. And uh, we had our, uh, th that was a pandemic. The good part is that a lot of volunteers, uh, you know, signed up to basically be a part of this movement. I remember we got over uh, a good good 400 plus volunteers uh, throughout the lockdown. People who volunteered uh, to actually give the food uh, to the people concerned. So we started off with Mumbai's arterial roads. We started off with the SV road. The 1200 meals on 29th March. Until date, we've done over uh, 47 uh, lakh cooked meals. Uh, these include uh, meals and relief operations when uh, you had our migrant workers starting to walk on our roads. Uh, we set up uh, relief operations at uh, all of uh, Mumbai's ingress and ingress points, standard points, which are Vashi on the Mumbai Bangalore Highway, uh, Thane on the Mumbai Agra Highway, and Dehisar. Uh, on the Mumbai Gujarat Highway. And uh, then when you actually had the Shamik Express trains which were announced irrespective of what the government of the day may want to say, the fact of the matter is people were going hungry. And uh, we adopted uh, three of Mumbai's railway stations, namely the VT station, the Bandra station and the Kurla station. And we ensured every train that left uh, and every passenger traveling there would actually get some food, water, biscuits, uh, sanitizer and etc. so that there is at least something for the person to eat. Uh, what we've realized um, is, of course, right now, uh, we are now a foundation. There is a Khana Shri Foundation, completely different from politics, uh, which is right now working on creating uh, India's first functional hunger map, which is essentially a uh, real-time relevant data set of uh, microclusters of some of the most uh, poor and homeless families across Mumbai. And we are actually... Uh, working towards ensuring that uh, the schemes which are actually meant for them, whether it is the PDS, whether it is uh, various other state government, national government schemes, national urban livelihood mission, is that actually reaching reaching them? And what does it take to basically get a city's crisis management infrastructure to actually be functional for the poorest of the poor? Somebody is really hungry. Where would he basically get food? And how do we how do we uh, solve these systems, these sets of interventions by by actually following global best practices and cutting edge technology. So, so that's that's what we're doing uh, from a Khana Chiyye perspective, which has been very rewarding. I think uh, it's it's also exposed uh, uh, the complete collapse of governance 
uh, as one would say but that said uh, it's also it's also taught us that when it comes to uh, the government the government is willing to uh, i think the best kept secret is to work with the government uh, most people think Um, consistent about it, and you actually demonstrate some capacity, they will uh, work with you. So we are in the process of uh, signing an MOU with the BNC. We've anchored the entire hunger map in uh, the Cotillia School of Public Policy and uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Center for Social Justice, which is a joint initiative of uh, Mumbai University and the London School of Economics. Uh, we're doing cutting-edge research when it comes to uh, how the pandemic has really uh, impacted uh, these ecosystems. and how should we exactly going about go about solving the problem of hunger for some of mumbai's most marginalized communities so that's that's been khana chahiye thank you so much for doing what you do i've been like uh, following your work and i think i've been like inspired uh, by what you have done during the pandemic for sure uh, we you. have more questions coming in on facebook so we have yeah, sagar is posting for zoom for us on zoom over here i'll ask them before we go into that i think one of the biggest challenge for young people to do honest politics and continue in uh, politics is the financial support i think their basic monthly monthly expenses and then politics also demands some extra money to make sure that the basic affairs are running how, how do you look at it how do we solve that problem or maybe address that issue uh, so i think i think this is extremely important and uh, please everybody should really pay attention when i when uh, at least i mean not that you're not you've not been paid, paying attention so far but please pay a little more attention here uh see i think it starts from it starts from uh, school it starts from college i remember in school i wanted to be a politician there was a uh, there was a uh, a test a sort of a career counseling uh, test okay just one second have i lost the video have you no no i can listen you yeah you're there it's like okay. so uh when it when it came to a test when it when it basically came to career counseling there was no option of, of a politician and i asked people why is there no option of a politician people said that uh, hey you know uh, it's good that you want to be a, a, a politician it's a great thing uh, but uh, you know i don't think there is a proper uh, career growth uh, path there or for that matter we don't really know uh, what would your remuneration be after these many years and which is true which is that there is a, a lack of a very clear growth trajectory and all of what we can see are the the bhais and the behens and the uh, patnis and the patis of uh, people already into politics and uh, that is that is really doubting so so number one there is no career trajectory which is which is fixed for a person who uh, doesn't really come from the, a political background or doesn't really have pots of money or is is not a history sheeter to actually rise through politics that point number one point number two when you come to college right uh, the people who are uh, political were the people who basically like to get into some sort of a fight and thought that uh, a, a, a badge of uh, an association of the political party will somehow give them some more influence and power to get out of the fights that they get into i mean that isn't that how most political affiliations in college colleges are that's that's exactly how it was and that no different while growing up in mumbai and in mumbai to we we have banned campus politics uh and that's that's really sad uh but but that's that's how it is now coming to coming to work life hmm. you today in india prakar are you am i audible yeah yeah so you in today's india you go to any corporate and you say that hey i am affiliated to a political party you even go go and put it in your resume on hr i mean to any hr person or you put it on your linkedin you you will first be asked 10000 questions as to why is this so and why were you forced to do something as though it's 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 like a bad thing and you would be asked to explain yourself as though you're a criminal it's ridiculous the fact of the matter today is that political affiliation is frowned down upon uh and it's it's sad because the corporates in india may frown down upon it but the same corporates when it comes to the uk and the us really take pride in the fact that somebody from uh, somebody from their company has actually been part of is part of politics and is is in a responsible position there it 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 reflects so highly in terms of leadership skills it means that the person there has so much more uh, uh, so much more uh, ability to influence outcomes by virtue of these spaces that he occupies that he or she occupies 
but 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 we we in india are a hypocritical bunch where we will not tolerate any person with any political affiliation whatsoever uh in parties political affiliation if at all is limited to those unions is limited to some sort of a some sort of a thing at 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 maybe at uh, those uh lower uh ocean ocean ones of uh skilled low skilled jobs uh, and that level but when it comes to uh higher jobs it's it's just next to impossible to actually be affiliated with a political party and 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 actually continue uh, i would not take names but uh, even in my own career journey i remember uh, i had set the cat among the pigeons when i first said that i'm i'm a i'm a member of a political party and i remember uh, there was a there was my my seniors told me that i shouldn't be basically saying that and even if i was a member of a political party i should hide that uh, i don't understand why does this why does this really happen because uh, we speak about corporate india basically attracting the best and the brightest talent if we want uh, that same talent density to reflect into some sort of a uh, way forward especially when it comes to politics we we, we not we we don't want that we will systemically discourage that we will uh, not let those candidates uh, actually be uh, be absorbed we would say that hey uh, this is this is problematic and you can't really speak your mind out and this is this is 21st century this is 21st century india in some of the most well paying jobs so this is hypocrisy and this has to be addressed and it has to be addressed one by one where it's 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 it's, it's all i mean the sad part in all of this is is that it's perfectly fine to basically be part of dinner table uh, dinner table uh, conversations whatsapp groups with your own seniors peddling bigotry as though that is somehow the new normal but they would not allow people from a political party whatsoever so it's okay to support a political party and it is almost expected of you uh, given uh, our work spaces but if you are uh, somebody who is rising up the ranks somebody who as a political affiliation it is it is looked down upon it is looked looked down as a liability and that has to change and that has to be changed that has to change if we want the brightest and best to come into politics because uh politics is very exacting whoever has this romantic notion of just somebody wearing a, a nehru uh, nehru jacket and a kurta just like prakhar is wearing uh, uh, something yeah. here camera and just wave at some people and you know you'll you'll show up uh, on uh, television for some debate and uh, people will be able to recognize and identify you and the same when it comes to the papers all this happens not to say that this doesn't happen and there is that bit of glamour and there is that bit of vanity but at its at its very core it it also takes a lot of time and i am even right now i i have responsibilities i have a family that depends on me uh i have uh, parents who are uh, senior citizens uh my dad uh, has illnesses and to just uh, just be able to make ends meet i have to have a full time job but at the same time the constituency also expects me to be available at their beck and call that is the parameter to to gauge uh, a politician's responsiveness receptiveness so not that young people need a lot of money but young people need uh honest money clean money so that they are not be holden to uh, any person or any any interest uh which can basically either turn into them being corrupt or them uh being compromised when it comes to issues that actually matter and uh that's the problem because right now the only the only model that i think works somehow is to either be an independent consultant and do some work or uh be a lawyer because you know lawyering so to say gives you that kind of a leeway that you do spend time and do spend energy but you also have a lot of free time and you can, uh, you're available and you're seen to be available uh, which is all that matters so this is i think central to uh, all of our problems because our parties i mean the parties don't essentially uh, pay people and because that's that's how it should be that party shouldn't basically be paying uh, its political leaders because that's not how political parties function um but i but i but i but i know that some political parties definitely get people on their payrolls and etc and all of that happens but uh, amadi party is a very honest party when it comes to that all of us contribute i contribute a fixed sum to the party every month uh, in some form or the other and uh, that's what the courage of new politics is in this new political culture is that uh, 
uh, politics is for the brightest and best. And whoever has said that politics is the last resort for the scoundrel has done the greatest disservice to humanity. Uh, and uh, that's that's upon us to change. So just moral of the story, I did manage to uh, retain that job and also basically be associated with the political party. It was difficult. I think I was shamed into uh, uh, initially somehow, you know, feeling guilty that, hey, why am I doing this? But I think when you have courage of conviction and when, you, when, you, when you're extremely straightforward about, uh, you know, the term mansa vacha karmana, there has to be an alignment in your thoughts, uh, words and deeds. And once that alignment is there and once you're honest about it, you just go out there and in your corporate space and say, hey, I am a member of the political party. And whatever I do as a member of a political party is certainly not at cross purposes with the organization. And, I'm, and I want to be honest about it. I don't really want to hide something. And I think the more and more people do this, the more and more um, people, uh, people uh, will get uh, will get conscientized about it. Will will basically start to change. But this this has to change. This thing that if you're a politician, you can't basically be a, be and somehow uh, uh, an, a successful corporate person. Um, it's the other way around. I think if you are a politician and if you can if you can win an election, you can basically run any company and you can basically basically ensure that it is profitable. It's that Absolutely. competitive. Yeah. And, and and that's 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 my limited point yeah i think you you took uh, one question then you took my sub questions as well so thank you for uh, answering them we will take a couple of more questions before we end uh, sure. one avishek uh, from kolkata has asked a question uh, ap had brought in ipac into in for 2020 elections what is ruben's view on this should organizations like this be brought in to manipulate public choice does that destroy the very ethos of free and fair election and second question is uh, by Gorang from Ahmedabad. Assembly is a secular place, but Arvind Kejriwal supported a religious guru participating in Haryana Assembly as a religious person, which created a big controversy. How is AAP different than from other parties uh, if they play on the communal agenda, which is similar to the, we spoke about a uh, bit about AAP and other parties. Yeah, maybe these two. So I'll try and answer Abhishek's, uh, Abhishek's question. Uh, what was Abhishek's question again? IPAC coming in. IPAC. Yeah. Okay. So I think, uh, see, uh, I wouldn't say it is manipulation of public opinion, but uh, where we are actually seeing greater use of technology and we are, uh, uh, and we and we have the entire mode of election basically changing. It's no longer that you have one, one leader take one large sabha and people will really stop whatever they're doing just to go and attend to that leader. That's, that's the thing of the past. Elections are changing. Electioneering is changing. We need to be smart about it. We need to use the best possible tools available. Uh, and the good part is we didn't pay IPAC anything. IPAC basically came here out of the goodness of their heart. So it's not that uh, uh, money was used or uh, donor money was used for that. Uh, I think we can't be faulted for using the best practices and the best possible talent that is available in the market uh, when it comes to electioneering. And that's something that we've done. That's something that we won't hesitate to do again and again. So I hope uh, that answers your question. And uh, uh, second is by that, Ahmedabad. Uh, sorry, Gauran yeah. from Ahmedabad around the the Haryana Assembly thing that happened. The religious guru came, and then I think Arvind supported publicly that it is fine to have a religious guru in the assembly. No, I don't think. Uh, uh, I don't know what are you referring to in Haryana because uh, we don't have elected representatives there, or neither have we given a ticket to a religious guru. But to my uh, to my knowledge, uh, we have been very, very, very clear that uh, we are different from other political parties. We will not ask votes on the basis uh, of religion, on the basis of caste, on the basis of uh, community. We will ask for votes basis our work, and that's been the narrative in Delhi. That's been the narrative in in uh, in Goa right now, where we are we're making an honest attempt at. Uh, uh, capturing the state's legislature, or for that matter, Uttarakhand, uh, and even Mumbai for that matter. So I don't know what, uh, uh, I'm not aware, quite honestly, of the example that you're referring to. But uh, as a party, uh, we have been consistent. Uh, we, have, uh, we speak of what we call Kaam Ki Rajniti. We speak of what we call Saaf Niyat Ke Neta. And I think we are both of that. And uh, our politics is, has always revolved around. I think as a balancing act in Delhi, 
Hanuman Chalisa and Sundar Khan did become a strong thing for Aam Aadmi Party. If you see, no, no, no. Let me respond. No, no. Very good question, and yeah. I, I welcome that question. If yeah. see in India, in India, religion is both personal as well as communal. Okay, and and, and and let's go by census statistics. In census, in the last census, only thirty, thirty-three, or thirty-four thousand people identify themselves as atheists. So bulk of the people may not really practice religion, but they identify with one religion. We are a religious country. Number one. Number two, when we actually have uh, Goli Maro Saloko, and when we actually have uh, a version of religion which is divisive, which is uh, basically weaponizing what would otherwise be simple acts of piety and devotion, if if on the other hand we we are actually setting the agenda by saying that okay, it's not our we are not we are not really asking for votes, but But this is our version of uh, egalitarian religion, which is acceptable to everybody, which is all-encompassing, which is loving, and which is uh, a very good counter to the politics and the religion of hate. What is wrong with this? It is just another identity. Are, are you trying to say that uh, that that a person's religious that a, that a dis display of religiosity is suddenly wrong, and that we don't ask for votes on religion? Remember that the personal display of religiosity is. is certainly acceptable more so in a space more so in a space where you actually have hate mongering by the principal uh, principal opponent and we saw the manner in which all of this all of this played out i think i think this is this is smart this is setting the agenda this is basically saying that this doesn't really matter uh, we we in the are, timing by the religion and there is no problem whatsoever with that ruben the timing of that play uh, of when this is said i think matters a lot and it is when the election time the last week And I think those things matter a lot, sir. And sir, it, you it, have no. You had Goli Maro Salo ko systemically being pushed for a few weeks. I Let's understand. I the opponent. That. No, that happened. Prakar, Prakar. Goli Maro Salo ko happened. Okay. Yeah, and if, if if saying the if 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 saying if saying the Haluman Chalisa is a counter to that, it's a counter that worked well, and it's a counter which is much more loving and encompassing and yeah. truthful to India. Then, yes, then I want to say that yeah, the, there was a counter to it in a religious manner, which worked well. I'm not saying it was a negative counter, but it worked well. But there was a religious counter to a religious counter. That's uh, what I'm saying, uh, which I think I think worked for the party, and uh, and I think yeah. Well, I would I, I would still for the record say I would still for the record say the counter was a personal display of religiosity, which in no way I think is at cross purposes with our agenda of good governance and, and things like that. I think it's smart. We kept. we kept the narrative uh, on 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 we kept the election narrative on uh, on the dot uh, in terms of water electricity in terms of uh, education and health and that's what prevailed and that's what really matter so we've been smart by fault us for being smart yeah that's a that's a different way to put it but yeah uh, any last thing that you would want to say to young people who are who will listen this in future also and we will take out clippings from this uh, in a constructive way not in a way to take out clipping to misplace but in a constructive way and i think share with our alumni and put at different places anything that you want to say to young people who want to join politics no i think as a uh, young people uh, we have a duty to uh, to really go out there we we have energy we have uh, 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 i think i think uh, as young people uh, it's not that we don't care everybody says we are a chalta hai generation i think that's not true at all we are a generation that care so much that it hurts but we will engage ourselves only in things which actually which actually matter and uh, the problem with politics and governance is that it's not tangible it's it's all abstract right think about it you actually go and see somebody on the road and the person has a smile on his face and you know you feel that you've been able to at least feed his stomach and that's a good thing uh, but yeah maybe that's a good thing but that's not enough and think about it how convoluted the whole uh, politics thing is that you vote for me and if i get elected and if my party gets elected in those many numbers we will actually be able to change policy and when we implement the policy in the right possible way it will actually reach to you and change your life it's really convoluted it's really it requires that stretch of imagination it requires that quantum uh, leap of uh, uh, the quantum revolution of thought nearly to be able to associate uh, associate that but i think as young people we can we can do that we can think like that we can we can think without a baggage we can we can actually ask hard questions we can actually 
we can actually ask questions about corruption. We can actually ask questions about why is it that even after these many years of independence, if we don't really have basic dignity um, for a bulk of our fellow citizens, uh, why is it that they don't have equality of opportunity? Why is it that they, they don't have social mobility? Why, why is it that they are able to better their lot? And as long as we ask these questions, and as long as we engage, that's all that matters. And I'd like to end by, by saying that I always give this example, a mosquito is more socialist than Karl Marx. It makes no distinction between the rich or poor, between those sitting in an air-conditioned room or the urchin on the road. And I think that this commonality of thought that, okay, I may be living in a reasonably uh, good, comfortable uh, cushion of existence, but the fact of the matter is uh, if there is somebody who's suffering and uh, if, if I'm not working towards uh, changing their life and that we, I can do that out of charity, but I should do that uh, out of self-interest because if today they're in trouble and if nobody's really helping them tomorrow, that will, that will really reach me. And maybe, yeah, I appeal to all of you, uh, may not be your uh, convictions, but at least self-interest, uh, please join politics, please uh, join any party. Uh, of course, I, I'd really like it if you join the Aam Aadmi Party and you can get in touch with me after this, uh, but any party for that matter. I've always believed that uh, young people are able to solve things which would have otherwise been intractable. I think I have young peers across the party lines and uh, we've, as I say, we, uh, we always fight people's uh, people's opinions and we don't fight people themselves. And keep that in mind. Um, please join politics and I look forward to uh, having you as colleagues, uh, being able to interact with you. Uh, and I think that that's what India needs. That's what India needs. We need, just as one generation after 1991, uh, you had a need for entrepreneurs uh, post the license permit Raj. Uh, right now, uh, with this with this new freedom movement, uh, if I could call India Against Corruption that we need a generation of political entrepreneurs, we need a generation of politicians. And uh, please join. Uh, I hope I've been able to uh, be, uh, answer your questions. I've at least been honest uh, uh, to answer that. Uh, but yeah, if you have more questions, uh, Prakar uh, will be kind enough to share my details with you. Uh, please try and uh, get in touch with me. I'll try and uh, respond to your questions in the best possible way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prakar. Thank you so much, Himakshi. Ujwalji uh, uh, has been coincidentally uh, a mentor to me and has also been one of the key people who has uh, helped us at Khana Chi. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for this, uh, uh, this opportunity uh, on this Sunday afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruben. Ujwal sir did ask a question uh, that people like sh you should endorse formal programs to prepare young people in politics. I have, I have endorsed that. So Ujwalji, I've, I'm completely for it. I think uh, you need a formal program because I would just say I was lucky to have interacted with the Dr. Jayaprakash Narayan to have actually had a elected representative like an adult who, whose uh, back office I actually headed and uh, that was a distilled uh, experience of sorts. Um, I, I think it's very important to uh, formal uh, uh, things like this, uh, formal programs like this actually work. Remember Prakar, our last conversation? Yeah. about uh, uh, getting politicians who are young people who are aspiring for political office uh, at the grassroots in the BMCs uh, of the world. Uh, the BMC election is in 2022. So I certainly endorse something like that. And all you young people, um, Ujwalji is uh, an amazing person. Uh, I've known Himakshi for a long time. I've just begun to know Prakar. Uh, but I think they're a fabulous team and a fabulous bunch. And uh, uh, the problem that they're working on is is a problem of our times. It's really exciting. Uh, please, if you want to explore politics in a way uh, which, which because, because see, all of these questions, not everybody's going to answer. Even in most political parties, they expect you to join. There is no standard roadmap as to how, how should you go about uh, developing your constituency, uh, being able to nurture and hone your core competency and skills. I think this program allows you to do all of that. Uh, it's, it's very important that uh, you actually have an ecosystem around you. This program gives you that. And uh, I think you should just explore uh, what's wrong, right? I think all of us, if we can, and forgive me for, if we can go and take uh, a year or two off and teach in a school, we can certainly uh, meaningfully engage with our constituencies and, and try and make a career out of politics. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ruben. So Indian School of Democracy has just launched its flagship program, The Good Politician, which is like a nine month 
experiential program in which uh, there are seven week of residential over the nine months and then there is a strong alumni support uh, you go to our website to check more details about it it is a completely practitioner oriented program we are looking for people who have a around 5 years of grassroots experience and 1 to 2 year of minimum political experience so it's a program for practitioners by the practitioners we've got the best of uh, politicians to come and be the facilitators over there so more details are on the website so do uh, go and visit it and see if you want to join it thank you robin for coming on a sunday afternoon uh, hope to have more conversation delve more deeper around and more have conflicting ideas together because then only something will churn and come out rather than we all being in one echo chamber it is important that we have conflicting ideas Pol politics is about reconciling conflicting interests if there were no political if there were no reconciling uh, uh, if there were no cross interests if there were no interests at cross purposes it would be bo boring so yes. politics is all about reconciling conflicting interests thank you so much thank you so much everyone for joining